Good day, viewers. Welcome to another update about the Niger coup. It is very bad that we are waking up approaching the perilous days that are to come. Following the ECOWAS decision that they are going to invade Niger in next week, the Niger junk has already reached out to the Russian private military company. But before now, I told you in my previous video that not because of this coup that happened recently, that Russia has prepared Mandy, Guinea, Burkina Faso, all these military states. Russia has prepared them ahead of this coup that happened. So there is nothing happening new that they have not prepared down before now. Take a look at this video. At Demodibo Keita International Airport in Bamako, Malian authorities received a new delivery of several warplanes and helicopters from Russia, its new major military and political ally. Ten aircraft were counted on ground and in the air, eight planes and two helicopters during the second. A Russian cargo plane delivered helicopters, weapons and ammunition from Russia to Mali on Thursday. Mali has publicized the arrival of new military equipment from Russia. Sharing videos on social media, military officials showed and commented the delivery of two combat helicopters and civilian radars sent by Moscow, praising it as a sign of fruitful partnership between the two nations. It also came after foreign leaders and particularly the Russian president Vladimir Putin cautioned ECOWAS, or rather Nigeria, against pushing to invade Niger in an attempt to overturn the coup d'etat and restore President Mohamed Bazoum's presidency. Yes. These videos you just watched now about the delivery of military equipment, warplanes, helicopters to Mandi, the partner of Niger, did not happen when this coup just happened. It has happened before this coup. It is a clear message that these people are partnering with a country that is supporting them. You saw the Burkina Faso 35 years old president when he was issuing threats to Nigeria. Also, the Guinea president did as well. The question is this. If these people's military power cannot match Nigeria's military power, what are they boasting with? And why are they saying they are ready for this war? The truth is this. The Russia is backing them. Take your time. Let us analyze the details about this. The relationship between Nigeria and Niger uh, is something that uh, spans hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. Uh, it's something that will live on for another hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. Uh, Nigeria and Niger are joined at the hip. Uh, we are Siamese twins. Whatever affects Nigeria affects Niger directly. Whatever affects Ni Niger affects Nigeria directly. So in fact, sometimes you can't even find the line between Nigeria and Niger. You have uh, chieftains in the northern part of Nigeria whose dominion extends into Niger and vice versa. And you have families uh, living across the border. Uh, our husband having two wives, each living across the border. So the line is only imaginary. Nigeria and Niger are one, and Nigeria and Niger will remain one for as long as this world exists. So, so, so if this is what, because you have also used a, a very, uh, you know, a very uh, close adjective by mm -hmm. saying that it's like a Siamese twins. Uh, if uh, this relationship is this close, uh, then let us in on first, uh, how I'm trying to look at the nexus now. Mm -hmm. you, you talked about the, a boundless boundary. Mm -hmm. uh, is that what it is? And which of these states uh, bound? Because if you look at the map now, mm -hmm. we we'll look at Sokoto mm -hmm. all the way to Borno State. Yes. Absolutely. The entire width of the north, uh, the boundary is with Niger. Uh, if you look at the thousands, thousands of kilometers, uh, you, it's, it's something that is just there and you cannot erase that line, nor can you erase the cultural affinity or the brotherhood, the kinship that exists between Niger and uh, Nigeria. And if you want to do that, the adverse effects will be felt in the entire subcontinent, the continent and the world. We are fighting with Niger in the MNJTF. If Niger removes itself from the MNJTF, what becomes of the MNJTF? And these are the same people that have been fighting with our soldiers, dying, so surviving, eating, living, dancing, singing together. So our relationship with Niger on a bilateral level is stronger than our relationship with any other country in terms of bilateral relationship. The unfortunate situation we find ourselves here is the burden of command on President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, who is chairman of ECOWAS, but also the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So ideally, the discussion should have started internally going out. So as federal government, president of the Federal Republic, 
and they knocked on the doors and we didn't answer or were we not listening or were we too busy with other things uh, happening in the country? Yeah, I, well, for time, we won't go back to looking at uh, why coup, mm -hmm. but again, we're trying mm -hmm. to look at uh, what next uh, to be done mm -hmm. uh, to bring about uh, mm -hmm. Uh, a solution uh, to what is happening in Niger and uh, with Nigeria as a very close neighbor. Now, now speak to us on, if you say uh, Nigeria and Niger, they, they share this uh, cultural affinity, religion, and, mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and many more. Uh, the Sultan mm -hmm. and uh, Nigeria's former leader, mm -hmm. uh, Abdul Salami Abubakar, mm -hmm. they've been asked to go mm -hmm. speak with the leadership mm -hmm. and also perhaps also have a meeting with Mohammed Bazou. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a, a starting point, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yes, it is. But, but uh, you sent this delegation to deliver a message. You can deliver a message and get the answer immediately. So again, it's the process. And this delegation went on behalf of ECOWAS, not on behalf of Nigeria. Up till now, no one has gone on behalf of Nigeria. I am yet to hear Nigeria cohesively, in a bilateral way, try to engage Niger. And if you want to engage Niger, there are traditional, again, and uh, political institutions that you could use. For example, Adahiru Mangal. Everyone knows the relationship between Adahiru Mangal and Niger. President Buhari, former President Buhari, even threatened us that if we disturbed him, he was going to move to Niger. So the affinity of people, especially in Kazina, uh, and Sokoto, and Kebi, and Maiduguri with, with uh, Niger, is, is, is too strong to discountenance when you're discussing this. Then the military itself. In the composition that went to Niger, our current ambassador to Niger, the former chief of defense intelligence, uh, Avian Usman, Ambassador Usman, was a directing staff at the NDC when some of these guys came to study under him. He was their lecturer. And we have so many... You're talking about the, the, the Nigerian uh, soldiers? Yes. Some of those who participated in the coup. Uh, he, is, he was their teacher. And in terms of special forces operations, we have... These are the same family. This is the same people. They train together. They deploy together. Then there should be some kind of understanding, you know, in terms of speaking of the same language, uh, you know, getting to understand what this is about for both countries. So uh, the bilateral relations mm -hmm. and... Uh, you know, the uh, pulling off the plug of electricity to Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Does this also uh, affect the bilateral relations Nigeria already has with Nigeria, or is this uh, an ECOWAS decision? No, of, course, of course. Now, this is the precarious position we found ourselves. The electricity is given to Niger, not for and on behalf of ECOWAS. It is Nigeria given Niger in a bilateral agreement, electricity. And we give them electricity, not as charity, but in brotherhood solidarity, so that they don't need to dam the river Niger. So now we pull the plug. It is Nigeria that pulled the plug, not ECOWAS. Yes, there are protocols in ECOWAS that says, yes, within the protocols, uh, sanctions, and so on and so forth. And this is why Nigeria should have engaged bilaterally first. For example, I would have hoped to see the president call in for an emergency national security council first before an ECOWAS uh, summit, uh, emergency summit, then even from the ECOWAS uh, perspective, there should be an emergency session of the ECOWAS parliament. They are par uh, parliamentarians in their respective states. Of course, now Niger may have pulled out, but they still have that strong center of gravity. Then also, maybe the traditional title holders, the strong ones in Nigeria, the, the traditional, the religious, and so on and so forth. So there are layers that should have been deployed, but we boxed ourselves into this seven-day ultimatum. And uh, you know, these special operators, when you give them an ultimatum, they will dig in. Then we need to have back channel discussions. Instead of going to Algeria and Libya, I would have chosen to go to Libya, sorry, to Mali and perhaps even Senegal. If I go to Mali, I know Mali will bring in Traore from Burkina Faso and will bring in Mamadi also from Guinea. So start from that perspective. So now is the time to deploy back channel mediation and discussions so that both sides will, will be presented with opportunities to save face. Otherwise, the more we dig in, the more they dig in. But for the record, Nigeria does not want a war with Niger. And it's not Nigeria uh, trying to go to war with Niger. This is a misunderstanding that mischievous pe people are taking and putting out there. But do the Nigerians also know this? Because we've seen pictures and uh, images of uh, uh, some kind of... Face-to-face, eyeball-to-eyeball, we can resolve. For example, the electricity issue. If the Nigerians are suffering, we are suffering. So now you have a blackout from Borono State, Maiduguri, all the way to Niger. Now we are fighting Boko Haram. What is happening to this enemy, this common enemy? Where is this common enemy? What is this common enemy doing now to the common detriment of the entire region, subcontinent, if not the entire world? We are not talking about it. Definitely this is an issue that Niger and Nigeria can resolve for and on behalf of ECOWAS. But also, countries like the United States of America need to come out clearly 
to state. Nobody wants, it is not fashionable to have coups anymore. Nigeria moved away from coups. If Nigeria can move away from coups, any country can. We have done seven successful democratic processes roll over. This is something very, very significant, but perhaps Nigeria, in our foreign policy, we need to look more outwards and be our brother's keeper. And this vacuum that we are living, perhaps, that is what breeds adventurers from external interests to come into our own spaces to do this. But I have absolute belief and confidence that this will not degenerate to the point that people are expecting. We have a chief of defense staff who is one of the most outstanding warriors Nigeria has ever produced, who has served in the theater, again, with Nigerians. And we have an MNJTF commander who is Nigerian, who leads the MNJTF, who has served with these special operators and also a Nigerian. How many Nigerian soldiers have come to Nigeria for defense college and so on and so forth? Also, nobody is talking about the Lake Chad Basin Commission. That's a very, very strong tool. We have an executive secretary that is Nigeria. Also, the Nigerian parliament. I heard some people saying, President Bola Hamatinibu sent for request. That is fictitious. You don't do that. They do not know the concepts of the diplomacy of war and what the constitution says about war. No, no, so, so you send the communication we, we hear that the president has sent to the National Assembly isn't true? My brother, if there's such a communication when more sensitive documents have leaked, you would have seen it by now. And there's absolutely no reason to do that because even within the constitution, there are parameters that must be set before the president can do that to the National Assembly. First, he has to build consensus. To build that consensus, he must have a National Security Council meeting. The governors must be a part of it. Other layers of Nigeria must be a part of it. We must notify all other institutional entities before we, the final step, go to our National Assembly to seek for a declaration. None of these steps have been taken. None of them have started. So it's mischief makers, again, because we have a very weak strategic communications regime that are taking advantage of this. So even the adversary, the insurgents, can plant certain things now. To, this is the best radicalization for them to show that, look, democracy, look at what is happening. Brother is about to kill brother just because of power. So we need to pull back. Nigeria must be the adult in the room. This is a God-given position. We didn't ask for it. We are the big brother, and we must play the big brother. Uh, and we're looking at the 48 hours, uh, you know, which is uh, ticking away. By Sunday, it will ex elapse. Mm -hmm. So um, in diplomacy, you mm -hmm. know, sometimes when you give such statements, mm -hmm. it's always difficult for you to back down. Mm -hmm. So what should be the solution? What is the solution is being done. And it's something that we cannot discuss on national TV, unfortunately. There's a lot of movement. There's a lot of shuttle diplomacy. There's a lot of interdic interdiction diplomacy. There are many, many layers that perhaps should have been kick-started long ago, but better late than never. The uh, deadline will come and go and nothing will happen. There will be extensions. There will be a peaceful resolution of this problem. And perhaps this provides a solution. All the time we talk about ECOWAS, is ECOWAS of states. Now we will be forced to talk about echoes of peoples because if Niger can reach out to Mali, reach out to Guinea, reach out to other, it shows that really echoes of states is working to a certain extent, but what we need to do is to build echoes of peoples. Otherwise, even if, even if for, for God forbid, there's going to be deployment, at the end of the day, it will be Liberia and Sierra Leone all over. And Nigeria will carry the brunt, will send the troops and so on and so forth. Echoes of people, this is the solution. Secondly, the ECOWAS Parliament needs to have legislative powers. If the ECOWAS Parliament had legislative powers, we wouldn't be talking about National Assembly. The CDSs will not be coming to Nigeria. Our own uh, president, uh, chairman of ECOWAS, will not be speaking. It will be the Parliament uh, speaking. Unless and until all parliamentary mechanisms for resolution are exhausted before it goes to the level of the executive. So with all the distractions that we have, this should not be another distraction. We are winning the war against terror for and on behalf of the region, for and on behalf of the continent, for and on behalf of the world. We must not lose focus. We must bring this war to conclusion. We must support this government. We must support these service chiefs and intelligence chiefs. And we must support and promote peace between Nigeria and You know, uh, listen to you, uh, is it safe to now say the uh, era of uh, Mohammed Bazoum uh, is gone? Well, this is an internal issue. It has nothing to do with us. When you go to mediate and negotiate, up till now we have not even begun to talk about CBMs, confidence building mechanisms. It's give and take. So whatever they want to do, it's an internal issue. If people support it, whatever they do, what, what the rest of the world, especially in Nigeria, must not do is to allow the region to degenerate into further chaos. Food insecurity, the insurgency, mobility, etc., etc., etc. Hunger is looming. The rains are not coming. There are trucks backed up because they cannot traverse the border, borderless spaces of ECOWAS. We must consider the downtrodden, the populace, the masses of, the, of our own region, not just one country. It is, it is, well, governments come, governments go. That is an internal decision. What the outside world can do is to mediate and provide 
platforms and safety conduits for a peaceful, amicable resolution. But that is purely an internal issue. Nobody can force another country and say, my opinion, you must do this, you must do that. However, it's like the Afghans and the Americans, and the whole world as a matter of fact. They say, and I quote, we want to be a member of the Committee of Nations. We want to be a part of the world, but we don't want the world to interfere in our internal affairs. This is our affairs. And even when you want an intervention, there are conventions, United Nations conventions. When you're unable to support, to secure your populace, then you reach out and you look for help. But you can't come and say you're going to forcefully go in. Yes, there are protocols within the ECOWAS uh, regime, the protocols that uh, ratify and define these things. But if you look at it now, there are dissenting voices within the ECOWAS. Some are aligning with uh, them, others are aligning with others. But for Nigeria particularly, Niger is the buffer between us and Libya. Niger is the buffer between us and utter chaos, uh, arms trafficking and so on and so forth. So we need to look at safety, stability, security, prosperity in Niger as a component of our own national security strategy and policy. And if giving them electricity is what it takes to maintain some of this stability and prosperity, by all means give them the electricity. So I'm listening to you now, it, it, it does mean one thing. It looks like uh, Abdul Salam, Abu Bakr and uh, perhaps uh, maybe some others uh, sh were not the perfect fit. No, they, no, they, no they were not. Uh, I, will say, I will look you in the eyes and say no, they were not. These are young warriors. You should have sent their contemporaries, people that they bled with in the foxholes, people they fought with, people they went hungry with. It has not escalated to that level. You should have sent people, and there are people within the systems, different systems that can have access to these people. There are people in the no, traditional... Non, non to the government? Absolutely. This is government. Government knows everything. Government is almost omnipresent. Government knows. But perhaps in our reaction to the ECOWAS uh, protocols and our new position as chairman of ECOWAS, we did not sit down long enough to look at these things. Having said this, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, if you won't give him anything, you have to give him this. He sees himself as one of those who fought the military to restore democracy. So, of course, there's this PTSD. He hears there's a coup in his neighbor's uh, realm. It is, uh, it is a superman coming to the rescue. He's not going to think uh, clearly about it. But the interconnectedness of Nigeria and Niger is more than probably me and my brother that came from the same mother's womb. And these are very delicate times, and we have to be exceptionally careful. We have to be our brother's keepers. Otherwise, all the successes that we have encountered, that we have gained in the last 10 years, the lives that we have lost could be for nothing. But again, it has to start with the leadership before the people, because, uh, for instance, uh, the uh, military government in Nigeria um, hasn't been receptive of those uh, uh, that the Nigerian government has sent. Yeah, but how would you be? When you have slapped me, I'm about to cry, then you come to say, I want this, I want that from you. Also, they have a population to administer. They have a country to run, whether they are the legitimate or illegitimate. And this is why I said we have to begin with CBMs. We have to have a list of confidence building mechanisms. We have to begin to agree. So, for example, the people go, the, uh, the envoys go in to go to Niger to uh, they might ask, all right, please, all we want, the right people is, let's just have a look, let's see Bozum. And in return, we were, we are able to do X, Y, and Z. So we have to begin to move towards de-escalating and deconflating the situation. But if you send our father, our grandfather, uh, General Abdul Salam Abu Bakr, he is too, his center of gravity is too big. Then you send our leader, uh, the Sultan, it has not gotten to that. We were too quick to bring out the big guns uh, from our toolkit. And then from there, you can't go anywhere but down. So we should have started. The ambassador in Niger should have been our ambassador, the first person to engage because he has all the credentials. Up until he became ambassador, he was the chief of defense intelligence of Nigeria, of the armed forces, for five years. An intelligence officer, an instructor, a directing staff at the NDS with connections with all these people. In the team that met them at the airport yesterday, I can tell you without fear of contradiction, at least two of them were his students at one point or, or the other. So imagine did, if it was did, hit. Did you say at the airport? So they didn't go beyond the airport? Allegedly, if you are to read, if you are to uh, accept what was said from the other side and so on and so forth. But exactly that. You can't bring out your big guns when you're just starting. You have to begin to graduate and calibrate yourself. This is diplomacy. I'm not a diplomat. I'm just a failed politician. But we know this much. Right. And also, as you are sending envoys to Algeria, to Libya, Mali is where you should be sending envoys. The chief of defense of staff of uh, Niger went to Mali first. This is what we must do. We must have a presence in Mali. We must woo the Malians back to our own side. A stable Mali is a safe Sahel. An unstable Mali is a very, very unsafe Sahel. And, and time for us to ask the question, what exactly is happening in the Sahel? Now, now we just realize that 
uh, we've seen a, 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 a gradual departure from uh, colonialism, that uh, especially the Francophone Africans, mm. uh, and this seemed to be uh, a growing one for five out of the 15 mm. ECOWAS member states mm. to all say, uh, well, they're with uh, uh, Chiani. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you see, again, when you have a reason to lay your grievances, you will uh, try to lay the one that will attract the biggest attention. Uh, carrying Russian flags and so on and so forth is just a cry for attention. I don't believe in blaming colonial masters and so on and so forth. I don't. This is very, very intellectually lethargic and is an escapist uh, a paradigm that people use to justify some criminality. No, we are responsible for our future. We are responsible for our poverty. Therefore, we are responsible for our own successes. The calamity of France uh, in Western, in Africa, in their adventures in the Western coast of Africa is the fact that the relationship did not evolve to the point where it is competent and contextually accurate with this current reality. To cite an example, citizens of the Francophone countries in Africa were before seen as citizens of France to the extent that their presidents and heads of government were members of the French parliament. But French now, the Fra France now, as a policy, we see what is happening on France, and they are saying it in French. This is, this is the dilemma that the, the French government has found itself. So they need to realign their policies, recalibrate their relationship with their own former colonies to ensure that this balance is attained. And what's Africa missing out here? Because we see a, a grand swell of support for the military uh, uh, administration in Nigeria. It's, it's not a grand swell of support for the military. It is a, where it's an opportunity to air grievances. Everyone is aggrieved. Either there is disequitable distribution of opportunities or resources or marginalization and this and that. So anytime, anywhere in the world there has been a coup, the first thing is where people take to the streets to celebrate. Until after reality sets down and you realize all your liberties are gone and by God, what did we do? So it's the same. People have to be given the spaces to vent. And this is something that we deny ourselves as Africans. But we must give ourselves spaces to vent. And we must have a deliberate policy of reintegration redistribution of uh, resources and deliberate integration vertically and horizontally is not just fiscal financial integration no political integration otherwise we will have pockets forever on the margins of our societies waiting to air out their own grievances in the most violent way possible and let's close on this uh, you say there are moves already and uh, some of these are not for the media but again <laughs> Uh, from the periphery, there are some that are meant for the media so that people can know that, uh, especially those who live uh, around the border area of Nigeria and Nigeria, they just would want to know what the governments of both countries are doing to uh, Good question. bring some kind of calm and Good peace. Good question. I answer your question with a question. When we were thrown into the chaos of uh, end of last year, the currency issue and so on and so forth, we didn't have notes and so on. What did those people do, those that were on the borders of Nigeria? they reverted to the safer. This shows you how our people have become one. So the search for, for common grounds is something that is ongoing even as you and I are speaking. But we shouldn't allow it to take too long to fester because we have adversarial forces from other parts of the world that will take advantage of this and we have internal saboteurs that may capitalize on this. So if I were President uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, strategic communications, and I would dispatch my NSA with a group of people that we know have the requisite center of gravity to embark on shuttle diplomacy. And this is without prejudice to what I do not know. One thing I know for certain is whatever needs to be done, can be done, is being done for us to have common grounds to move away from this. Yes, but unfortunately sometimes because of statements that have been made, we have to find ways to save face for both sides so that we don't seem to look as if we capitulated out of weakness. In other words, there is hope. Absolutely. Ali Gabi is a fan.